Hello again, YouTubes. So I figured I'd uh, use this afternoon. I got done ordering some parts for the 68, uh, some ignition stuff. But I figured I would use uh, this afternoon, what's left of it anyways, to do a little bit of work on the brown cow and see if we can't get this thing, uh, get this thing kind of right again. So a couple things I noticed right off. Of course, I, I did mention that uh, I gotta never did wire up the choke on this. Uh, give you guys a little bit of uh, fill in the blanks here. Um, so it does still have a 400. So after Kayla and I moved to town, I had the video where we uh, actually had swapped the motor out because once again, um, I don't remember exactly what happened, but uh, I think we I think we burnt a valve or something along those lines. And I think that was motor number five that we had put in this thing. Um, so I do remember that we found a motor, we think it came out of about a 75 or four um, Ford full-size car. I don't even really remember what it was. It might have been an LTD, but at any rate, and so that's the motor that is in it right now. It is still the 400. Um, however, I got a little bit uh, ambitious uh, and found some parts laying around that I was able to buy. Uh, and uh, put a uh, put a four barrel and the intake manifold on there, um, and that's been about probably five years ago, I think. Shelby, that is really really distracting. I'm gonna take that away from her for a moment. <laughs> um, so, anyways, uh, so um, then of course, like I said, I let uh, a guy that worked for me drive it for a while. Um, had the 32s on it, uh, those kind of started getting getting wore out, and so we put a set of uh, 31s back on it, and those are pretty pretty cruddy tires to say the least. Um, had a set actually of 31 10.50 Cooper Discovers, as you can see, laying around the shop, just old scabs, they weren't really all that great. Uh, but, you know, they all hold air, and uh, are actually better than the tires that were on it, so that's what we got on there now. Uh, and it had basically kind of sat dormant for, I don't know, it had been, been about uh, two years um, since I had really done anything at all with it, other than just, I think I fired it up one time to, to park it where you guys had seen it. Um, short of that, it is pretty much exactly the way that it has been. Um, you know, it, uh, yeah. Shaky, uh, shaky driver's side seat and the tack that works occasionally. The uh, needle has fallen off the speedometer now. And of course, as you guys probably saw on my ride home, never did get around to putting the, uh, the subwoofer in the side. The uh, fitment in that side panel just wasn't quite right. And by that point, I, uh, I was uh, about done driving it, but just not ready to be done with it, I guess. Um, and of course, you know, as you see, we're about ready to, to resurrect, but first thing I'm going to do is, uh, we got to get power to this, uh, choke coil and make sure that that's operating properly. Uh, when I came in the garage with it, uh, I did notice that there was some mouse nestage, which is unusual as our cat at the shop usually keeps that under control. And I also noticed a pretty, what sounded like a pretty healthy vacuum leak when I shut it off, um, which could be probably not helping it run all that great. Um, so I'm going to get up underneath the dash, and I'll show you guys how, uh, how we go about diagnosing that. And then uh, there's one other thing that I wanted to show you guys. We'll fire it up, and uh, you'll see that there's a fuel pump sitting right there. actually sounding pretty good but uh, if you look right down in here you'll see hopefully you can see that uh, the gas is leaking out the weep hole on the fuel pump so I would say, you know, nothing particularly abnormal there. Um, probably lucky I made it home without starting on fire. 
but on the same token at any rate um moving forward gotta obviously replace the fuel pump you know it sat long enough that the rubbers and the diaphragms had uh had given up the ghost so i guess uh you know let's get started getting this thing uh safe and ready to run down the road So first things first, we're going to go ahead and wire up this choke. Um, we're actually pretty fortunate here. This thing already had an electric choke on the two barrel carburetor and I couldn't honestly tell you why I didn't hook this up. Uh, oversight on my part or whatever the case may have been. Um, but uh, so I did find the wire. It was uh, dangling down underneath there. Um, if I had not found this wire that has been obviously chewed on by Shelly, Shelby, because it was hanging down, and we're working on that. But um, if I could not find this wire, where I would have gone on this Ford alternator is there's a uh, terminal off the back of the alternator um, that's labeled S for stator. And uh, what happens there is when the alternator is energized and putting out voltage, it will energize that stator wire. And so that's what I would typically use on a on a Ford at the very least that didn't have a that did not have a um, uh, choke wire present. Um, now, when you're testing those, um, you got to make sure that the vehicle's running when you test it. it otherwise, you will not have uh, voltage. So, as you can see right now, I've got the uh, test light, and we're going to make sure that we've got good ground right there. And right now, key off. You can see there is no power. Uh, one of the other places that a guy can take power from, and I usually don't like to do it, is uh, from the coil, which of course is energized as soon as the key is turned on. Uh, one of the guys that, uh, that I work with in the shop, or that worked for me in the shop, um, he likes to take a power wire, especially on the Chevys, we've worked on a lot of those lately, from over there, um, where it comes up into the wiper circuit, which makes it a good fused fused link. Um, but anyways, in this case, obviously we got a a choke wire. What should be the choke wire? We're actually going to check that out. I don't know that we have power to it right now, or that it's functioning properly. But we're going to make sure it is. Um, and once again, if I had not, I would just be running a wire off of the S or the stator terminal on the back of the alternator. And which is actually where this wire should come from uh, anyways, but without uh, You know, I'm babbling on but let's go ahead and test that wire So we're gonna fire it up and we will test for voltage And as you can see we have voltage so We can go ahead and shut it down and uh, yeah, so we want to check a couple of things here actually in reference to the choke system. So what I'm going to do here initially is uh, I'll run the throttle just a little ways open. I'm going to open that choke up like so. And then the way this should work is if I wrap that throttle back and forth, what it should do is set the high idle cam over here on this side. And uh, it should also flop that choke all the way closed. Now. Um, in most cases, what will happen is as soon as you start it up, it will bring the choke back just a little bit because if the choke is all the way closed, then it will uh, it'll choke off the motor, feed it too much fuel, and it'll flood out and die. And then, of course, there's some adjustments in the uh, the choke coil itself as far as uh, you know how how cold the uh, as far as uh, you know how the choke sets, uh, how far closed, and uh, and how long it stays stays closed. Typically speaking, um, you want about two minutes from the time you start the vehicle until this choke opens. And uh, we'll demonstrate some of that as well and then verify that the uh, high idle cam is coming off. So, we're going to take the throttle, we're going to snap it closed, just like that. Now the other thing that is important to note here, you'll see that the choke is completely closed, vehicle's not running obviously, but if I hit the throttle, it should open up this choke just slightly. And as you can see, it does. Now that's, uh, so if you go to full throttle, you know, you're not choking it out and uh, 
and again of course pulling way too much fuel because when this choke flap is closed throttle is open all of the vacuum is trapped underneath here and it's just sucking fuel through the venturis but um, we're going to go ahead and take this wire and i'm going to shorten it up just a little bit and uh, route it up to here and then we will check the choke function okay so um at the garage door open so i don't gas myself out of here uh got the uh the wire obviously hooked up to the choke and uh the ground wire is hooked up as well so get a ground and a power life should be good there and we've tested for power on that okay have fun with my little hat thingy yeah. <laughs> hey it works i ain't complaining um, so anyways, so uh, basically what we're going to look for here is uh, when I start it up, what we want to see is obviously, like I'd said, that that choke, uh, choke blade opens up just slightly enough to pass some air by so that we're not building up all of the vacuum underneath that, uh, that choke blade. Um, we want to note that we are going into, uh, into high idle, uh, which it did sound like it was, but uh, we're going to verify that again. We're also going to double check voltage. Uh with our handy dandy test light to here once the vehicle is started. And then we're going to confirm that the, uh, that the choke blades, as this thing is running and power is applied to this choke coil, that the, the choke blade is slowly opening. And we wanna do that over about a two minute period. So let's go ahead and fire it up. And we'll make sure that uh, everything's working as advertised. We can also see is that our base idle is not uh, not set properly so we're definitely gonna have to do some work on that but you could definitely see that that choke was uh, was moving and opening as it was supposed to and that as I brought the throttle there that it came out of the high idle setting so we're gonna go ahead and uh, try and set that base idle um, I'm wondering if we shouldn't go ahead and fix that fuel pump first before I have a massive issue but uh, we're going to try and do this real quick. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to turn that up just a little bit. Definitely having some other problems, but that could also be related to some fuel starvation. Um, but at any rate, you guys get the basic idea. That is how we uh, set up a choke, and that should actually be pretty universal. Almost any four barrel, two barrel with an electric choke is going to set up, you know, marginally the same way. And of course, I didn't show you how to set up the high idle cam, but at least if you can get your base choke functions working properly, on your rods, um, it'll at least uh, get you pointed in the right direction. So, um, I guess we'll uh, 
get some more work done on this and uh, this will probably be well yeah at any rate we'll get some more work done on it so thanks for watching